Well, hello there, <laughs> my dear sewing friends. That's a big old pile of fabric scraps, isn't it? Now, I'm not sure if you can relate, but this can be pretty overwhelming because it's that never ending dilemma between you don't really wanna throw them out because they're perfectly fine, but on the other hand, what to do with all of that? And don't get me wrong, I love all the little scrap busting projects. I have like a gazillion of them on the channel, but today I really wanted to give myself a, like a really good post <laughs> hopefully to encourage some of you as well and turn this into clothing so something that we can actually wear and today we have a really nice assortment of scraps some are bigger some are smaller some are knit some are woven so I see a lot of potential in here and anything goes you know that I like all things creative as long as it's made thoughtfully made well and as long as it's something that I will actually use and need so you know I don't want to do a project for a project's sake and um, most of the times I already have these sorted out but you know I haven't been keeping up lately so we're just gonna do that together and right now I think I'm just gonna sort them out by color because that would be the best way to go about it in my scenario and I also have like a little bag for tiny little scraps that I can't really use for much but they could could be used as a stuffing for something. So that's what that is for. And you might recognize a lot of these scraps because these are from all of the previous projects that I have done, some of the upcycles as well. So a lot of familiar fabrics in here. Okay. <laughs> So I did deviate from my initial plan, but just for a tiny bit. And I mainly sorted these out in color schemes with you know, some minor adjustments here and there. And as always, you have to do and you have to find the best way that works for you and your particular way of working with fabric scraps. But I find that when I sort these out, it also gives me the time to hold each scrap and sort of start thinking about what would be that perfect project where I could use these in. And oftentimes, I find that if I don't get started with the fabric scraps right away, I'm just gonna keep staring at these piles, admiring them. It's almost like breaking that blank page when you're painting. You just, you know, you just have to do it. You just have to get started, get in that groove. And what helps me is starting with a project that is the most obvious out of all of them. Something that really screams at you when you were sorting these fabric scraps. So I think this will be our first project. I think I have settled on making a t-shirt out of this lovely lemon knit. The only problem here <laughs> is that I only have enough of this fabric scrap for one sleeve and kind of one front pattern piece. Lucky for me, I had a scrap of this white t-shirting which was enough to cut back pattern piece, another sleeve, and there was a tiny bit of extra left. So I thought, you know what? Let me take a page out of my own book and let's do some really fun color blocking. Now, if you have been sewing with me for a little while, you know that I've done quite a few videos on color blocking, but when we're working with fabric scraps, you just kind of have to work with what you have. And after a little bit of finagling around, quite a bit of problem solving and just trying to visualize what would actually look good, I think I have settled and <laughs> I have cut out my pattern pieces. There's no going back. All right, so now that we have done all the heavy lifting, the easy part, in my opinion, is the sewing because you just gotta put it all together. That's about it. And it's a t-shirt, so nothing difficult. But do keep your iron handy so that way you can press your seams, especially the curved ones. And now uh, pressing as you go is such a good practice when you're sewing. So if you've been sewing and your finished garment just doesn't look as sharp, try pressing as you go. It makes all the difference. And also, I invite you to think about what else can tie this whole project together. So a lot of times when we work with scrap fabric, it feels a little bit discompopulated, right? So to bring it all together and to sort of make it look and feel cohesive, what else can we add to it? In my case, I am going to choose a coordinating thread for the hem, and I'm going to do that on both, on the lemon fabric and on the white fabric as well. So that way it really is all thought through.
and I decided to go for a uh, white neckline for the t-shirt uh, well, partially because that was the only <laughs> choice that I had but I also think it's going to look really nice so I have to finish that up tidy up all loose threads tuck them in and then we'll be ready to take a look well <laughs> ta -da! let me show you how this looks up close without the microphone being clipped to the front and let me guide you through what is going on here so first, of course, we have this color blocking detail between lemon print and white fabric, which I think works really well. And the color blocking line, as you see, is not straight. It's actually curved. I think it looks a little bit better that way. It occurs right underneath your armpits, so that way you're not dealing with a ton of bulk whenever you're inserting the sleeve and everything just comes out really nice and neat. And then that color blocking detail goes into the sleeve, then it spills onto the back and here, I was actually missing a piece here at the shoulder. So if you take a closer look, here the shoulder seam is as it should be. But here the shoulder seam is actually pushed forward because I didn't have enough fabric. But because it's the same print, you can't really tell. And then I also decided, you know what, let me spill this lemon print onto the back pattern piece. So that way it's almost like the wrap around circle and it makes it look really cohesive. And then of course we have the colorful hem detail on all of the sleeves and the hem of the t-shirt itself and I just think it really brings it all together so all in all I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now here's an extra idea for you if you want to try out simple color blocking option. Here's a top that I did years ago and I still wear it by the way. Here the color blocking line is just straight but nonetheless it could be a great option for your scrap fabric. All right, <laughs> our first project is done. And what do you think? In my book, it's definitely a success. I know that I will wear things like that in a heartbeat, but obviously we're all different. So you gotta do what's right for you, but hopefully it inspired you a little bit. And by the way, if you do wanna make very similar color blocking and arrangement, but on the woven pattern with a woven fabric, I have a very detailed video that shows you how to hide those darts in those color blocking lines. Super useful. I will share that with you guys underneath this video and as we're talking about a uh, where where did it go there we go <laughs> I think I have my next project laid out in terms of fabric scraps do you remember that a stripey dress that I upcycled into a t-shirt well I chopped off the entire bottom right and it was almost enough right the common case with fabric scraps it was almost enough to make something for my little one but not quite and then I also had a, this fabric scrap of this gorgeous dark floral from one of my previous projects one of the recent ones so they're both knits they would go well together and I know that it sounds like a very unlikely combination but bear with me I think it's going to look really nice first I started by cutting down the seams of the bottom of the dress so that way I can see how much fabric do I actually have and then of course the choice of the pattern so in this case I'm gonna go for a raglan sleeve t-shirt the short sleeve one and here's an extra tip a raglan design is just made for scrap busting it's so scrap busting friendly I absolutely love it now when I place the pattern on top of the fabric I realized that <laughs> there's just about an inch and a half two inches not enough of fabric to fit the entire pattern piece in so I thought okay I'm gonna go ahead and trace the top of the pattern off so that way I can cut those pattern pieces out of the floral fabric sort of like creating a yoke and sleeves would be floral as well that's basically the end of the story after that it all just came together and here's the final result okay are you ready for this <laughs> look how cute I think it looks really fun I wouldn't mind having one of these for myself in fact I might just make another trip to Joanne's and pick up more of this floral one but I absolutely love the combination and I know it might seem a little strange but the dark floral goes really well with a dark stripe beige stripe goes really well with these beige and light flowers and then the teal uh, ribbing kind of ties it all together I don't know it feels like it gives it a fresh vibe I really love this color combination and print combination as well so my little one has a new t-shirt for spring
Now for those of you who want to make a scrappy raglan t-shirt for yourself, here are some inspiration pieces from my past projects. Remember, you can mix solids, you can mix prints, and you can also make your raglan sleeve pattern in woven fabric as well, if your pattern allows it. So it doesn't have to be knit only. So this far, we've been working with medium-sized fabric scraps, something that you can actually cut a pattern piece out of or, you know, finagle it around. But what to do if your fabric scraps are smaller? Not necessarily this small, but, you know, smaller. Well, there are a couple of things that you can use them for. Number one, if fabric is appropriate, you can use it for undergarments like undies and maybe tops. You can also use some of these fabric scraps like pocket bags or assorted lining and even bias tape. So definitely, there's a lot of things that you can use your fabric scraps for. You just got to think beyond and look for the opportunities where you can actually use them. For this next project, I think the pile of beige fabric scraps is calling my name. And I could easily continue making raglan sleeve t-shirts from fabric scraps, but after the one that we made, my little one doesn't really need any more. But what she does need is a cardigan. And here, as I'm going through these fabric scraps, I have this wonderful beige knit. I made a couple of projects out of it for myself. I love it. And I know that my little one loves to pet it. So I I thought, you know what, what if we combine it with this rib knit and it just so happens that these are pretty much the exact same color. While we're working on this project, I wanted to say, dear thoughtful makers and members of the channel, thank you so, so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. And as always, check out all of the members perks. There are so, so many, including the weekly members extra videos and instruction sheets. So don't miss out. Make sure that you tune in for the members extra video. There was one yesterday and there is a bonus video coming tomorrow so definitely tune in and again thank you so so much for your support all right let's get back to the project obviously all of these fabric scraps are really little but i'm thinking what if i combine them into stripes and make my own fabric i would say it's a little bit easier said than done because as always when you're working with scrap fabric you're working with very little fabric to begin with and here margin of error is very slim because i don't have much at all Besides, when you're working with stripes, you also have to be mindful how these stripes are going to align on the front pattern piece, back pattern piece, and the sleeve as well. Speaking of the sleeve, here I'm also using raglan sleeve pattern. And again, I absolutely love it. All of the things that I made today in this video are self-drafted, but you can do them without a problem. I will leave the tutorials for you guys in the info box below underneath this video. camera it's happening all very very quickly because obviously we have multiple projects we're working on plus your scraps and the size of them and dimensions and all of those things are going to be completely different from mine so we're all working within our own set of circumstances but <laughs> words cannot describe how long it actually took to put this all together and not the sewing part itself but figuring out thinking through like 25 times multiple situations multiple Multiple variations because I'm working with a very <laughs> very limited amount of fabric but the shell is done I'm really happy about the shell I think if I finish it off and it all comes together it's going to look really cute we're gonna take a look at it a little bit closer once it's all done but now because I do have a lot of seams on the inside I want to make sure that I line it because imagine putting this on yourself especially on a little active body all of these seams yeah I want to make sure that I line it it will also add a little bit of weight to this jacket as well so that way it's like a nice jacket or cardigan I haven't decided which one yet so for the lining I was thinking that I could use up this polka dotted knit which I absolutely love it's nice it would go really well in a color scheme but I just don't have enough I literally don't have enough then I thought do you remember that beige cotton knit from one of the mystery boxes? The one which made me laugh hysterically <laughs> with two big holes cut out right in the middle of the fabric? Well, if you put these two together, 
it's almost like a perfect match of color. So I thought, well, let's just go ahead and use that for the lining. So to put the lining in, I'm going to be using my very simple lining system. <laughs> It's just a very simple way of attaching lining into something that has a cuff over here and a cuff on the bottom. And I absolutely love doing that. I've been doing that for quite a while now. I really love it. And I have purposefully cut the lining uh, a little bit bigger just because I finagled with these pattern pieces so much. I don't remember, um, you know, where I took something away, where I added something. So I'm just going to adjust the lining and um, I don't really have much to work with in terms of <laughs> cuffs and ribbing on the bottom, so I'll just have to make the best possible decision that I can and uh, hope for the best. As a result of that, all the ribbing on the bottom and around the center front and neckline, I had to combine out of three different pieces and try to align that with the seams on the actual garment. So that was a challenge, but you know what? That actually went pretty smooth, or you know, as smooth as it can go. But I did botch the bottom of one side of the cardigan. Not by much, but enough to sort of really irk me. So here, it was something that I was already going to do, but now I was like, yes, <laughs> this is the solution. So there was no way that I was going to redo it because there was, it was a point of no return. And my friend Mari from Mari Sews, uh, she's actually the mastermind behind Dress a Girl around the world in a YouTube space. She sent me these leather labels as a gift for Christmas. I love these labels. So I thought, you know what? This one that says magically made is going to be perfect for this little cardigan and is going to cover my mess up on the bottom of that ribbing. So are you ready? Let's take a look and let me guide you through on what's going on here. So in the front, I tried to match all of the stripes to the best of my ability. And as I mentioned, the uh, neckline band and the bottom band, they all had to be constructed from three different pieces. So I tried to match that with the seams on the actual raglan as well. So that way it looks and feels intentional. But on the back though, <laughs> There was no option. I was running out out of this knit and there just, there was none. There was none. So I had to improvise and I had to break the pattern of the stripes. So, you know, at this point it is what it is, but I don't think that it is uh, too noticeable. I know it's there. Does my little one care? Mm. But when I did mention to her that this tag over here says that it's magically made, ooh, <laughs> I had the look of approval from her, so I'm earning mom points over here. The sleeve is a good length, but I wish I could have made the cuff a little bit longer, but again, this was all that was left from all of the scraps, and it's not enough. I also did a little bit of top stitching along the front band, so that way it secures that seam in place, because there's just a lot of bulk going on but I think she likes it she did a little happy dance and I like it as well and honestly if I had enough scraps I would have made one for myself but speaking of which have you seen the jacket that I made out of 50 little squares basically it's a scrap fabric project but in my case it was an upcycling project from an old sweater and fabric scraps but of course you can work with what you have so if you want to see that video click right over here and I think it will really enjoy that project. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!